Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you back here. Thank you very much for the, to the organizers uh, for inviting me again to this great fair. And uh, it's good to go back to normality, to normal normality instead of the new normality. Well, yes, uh, thank you very much for the, for the introduction, for the presentation. Um, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about, uh, in half an hour, about how things have uh, gone so far. Uh, in a very special moment, as, as it was said before, and as Regina has already mentioned, uh, and particularly to see how uh, COVID-19 has affected uh, wines. We're going to deal with uh, five main points, which are uh, to what extent has COVID uh, really affected the wine market, which is part of the work that I'm, I'm actually doing for the OIV. Uh, we're going to see how uh, and to what extent this impact has been uh, greater or smaller into the bulk markets, which are the ones that are, we are most interested with here, uh, to see if uh, the impact has been similar to all different types of bulk market. As we were mentioning before, actually there are, and I've uh, said it uh, many times in the, in the recent years, there are many different types of bulk wine markets. Uh, it has nothing to do, we'll talk about them, we have, they have nothing to do uh, because of the prices, because of the clients, because of the, of the types of wines that are sold in different subcategories of bulk markets. We will uh, give some examples, some uh, uh, top actors, uh, mainly exporters, but also importers, and how they have developed during these uh, recent months. And at the end, we'll try to address the point on to what, uh, what can we expect uh, for the current campaign and for the next uh, months uh, coming ahead, and see to what extent, in particularly, a scarcity, a scarcity to when uh, Ms. Vice President has, has mentioned already, a scarcity of wine, uh, low production worldwide, could affect the evolution of markets in, uh, in the future or the coming months. So the first point is to what extent uh, COVID has COVID-19 has really affected wine markets, and it's, it's difficult to to see. Although uh, it, it seems that yes, the pandemic has really affected our markets. It seems so, and actually uh, one of the good things about numbers is that we can make graphics with those numbers, and uh, sometimes graphics are pretty self-explain, explain. They, they really uh, give us a very good picture of reality. I don't know if you can see correctly the, 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 the slides and the, the screen from, from behind. No problem, the organization will have the presentation, so if anyone needs some specific numbers or, or whatever, we can, we can send it to, to him or to her. So, as I was mentioning, yes, uh, we have here the evolution up to the first semester of this year, and yes, it seems that pan the pandemic uh, started in February 2020 has really, really affected. There was one trend before February 2020, and there was a completely change in, in that date, right? Uh, here we see the level of the year-to-year -year figures and how they evolve. In this case, these are uh, um, exports, world wide exports of all types of wine in value terms, in euros, and we were around the level of 30, 31 billion euros. But then in February 2020, uh, this uh, changed uh, sharply and this changed dramatically, particularly, and we'll see the below, we have the monthly change, the change from one month to the similar month one year before. Uh, there was what we can called the hard COVID in the spring of 2020, uh, the months of uh, March, April, May, uh, even June uh, last, last year were absolutely dramatic. It was the time of lockdown. It was the time of, uh, well, everybody staying at home. It was the time of uh, difficulties to, to export, to move, or whatever. Uh, in those months, the decrease was around 15% in the value of world trade. Then we had uh, what we may call a sort of soft uh, pandemic. The effects during the second semester of uh, last year were also bad, depending on the months. It was particularly bad at the end of the year and, uh, and in January 2021, but uh, less dramatic than in, during the spring. And then what we have in this semester, in the first semester of, uh, 
of 2021 is an really big increase. Recovery is, is really uh, fascinating, is, is, is very, very strong. Not even to the levels of pre-pandemic, to, to, to February, to, to, to the level of sales that we had in February 2020, but even reaching in value terms a historic record high uh, level of more than 32 billion euros. So it's not only that we are recovering to go back to pre-pandemic levels, but that we are really experiencing a great, great recovery uh, in historic terms. What we can also do with this exercise is to compare what has been the cost of the pandemic, uh, comparing, as I was saying, uh, the level of sales during those years, uh, those months, sorry, between February 2020 and the month in which we recover, we, we uh, recover those pre-pandemic levels that was in uh, May approximately last uh, this year. And what has uh, COVID cost us? If we compare the sales figures of those months to what we might call the normal sales, the sales, the, the sales level at which we were in February 2020, the cost of the pandemic for the world of wine, for, for, for world exports of wine in, as I repeat, in value terms, is more than 2 billion euros. That has been the cost of, of the pandemic for, for our wine. But if we go a bit, a little bit deeper into the consequences of, of, of the pandemic, which have been very, very big, we see that the uh, cost in value terms has been, and the effect in value terms, has been much larger than in volume terms. In liters, the evolution, the, the behavior has been very different. It was, of course, the same problems in, uh, during the spring 2020, uh, what I mentioned, the, the hard COVID. We were decreasing sales before the pandemic, in uh, 20, 2018 particularly, then 2019, very stable, and then the pandemic came and we decreased sales uh, dramatically again, but recovery was uh, much faster in volume than in value. And the recovery during the first semester of this year has been very similarly extraordinary uh, in historic terms. But we haven't reached pre well, no, we haven't reached historic levels of sales in volume so far. So yes in value, but not in volume. Uh, impact on COVID uh, has been much tougher in value than in volume, as I mentioned, uh, because, and this is, this, is quite, this is just a reflection in numbers of things that we may think about. Uh, the impact has been much larger in value because the impact has been much larger in the on-trade uh, channels and it has been particularly tough in some countries like the United States and many others, but not so much in those countries like the Scandinavian countries in which the lockdown has even favored some uh, level of uh, consumption when remaining at home. So the impact has been very different to, uh, depending on channels, depending on types of wine, depending on uh, system of, of, of bottling, container and depending on the markets. For instance, and something that has been already said, those that exported in bag in box last year experienced a great, great year of sales, right? Because bag in box was, was, very, was in, increased a lot. Um, and much worse for bottled wines than for bulk wines. Here we can make another, another big difference. We can, we can see how uh, COVID impacted in uh, world exports of bottled wines in value where we can Definitely see that was the same curve of uh, big decrease in February uh, after February 2020, and then a sharp increase during this first semester, and a similar uh, thing, but but different in in volume terms, where the decrease uh, during the spring was also very big. Recovery was even faster in volume than in in value for bottled wines, and uh, recovery this semester in volume is not that large, right? Uh, maybe, and this is just an idea, maybe we are, what is happening with bottled wines is something similar, similar to what was happening before, which is that we were not selling many more bottles of wine, but we were selling them more expensive, right? And probably we are recovering that trend. Well, the, the, as I was mentioning, the, uh, the, the, the impact has been larger in the bottled wines than on on bulk wines, on bulk wines, what we can see 
uh, is that yes, uh, in also in volume, there was a, a sharp decrease again in, during the spring of 2020. We are recovering a lot now, but not to the levels of, um, of to historic levels. None in volume, nor in, sorry, apparently there were both, the first one was in value, the second one was, was in volume. Uh, but uh, we are recovering sharply, but not to historic levels because we were much, be, we were much better before. Has there been an impact on bulk wine markets? Yes, definitely, but the impact due to COVID-19 seems to be much less clear than on bottled wines. And we can see also the comparison between the year 2020, well, between February 2020 and February 2021. And of course, the decrease in, particularly in value for bottled wines has been much larger than the actually increase, a small increase in bulk wines. So the, the effect was completely different for bulk than for, uh, than for, for, for uh, bottled wines. And the recovering during the first semester is again larger and stronger for bottled wines, right? So it seems that bulk wine moves in a com very different way than bottle. Uh, however, bulk wine will react to different drivers because there are different bulk markets, as I mentioned. Bulk to final consumers depend heavily on consumer and final markets. The bulk that wine that, for instance, uh, from New Zealand, from Chile, from Australia, from the United States are selling to uh, the United Kingdom depends on how the market of the United Kingdom, how the consumers in the, in the United Kingdom uh, market are, are behaving, right? But there is another type of bulk wine, which is bulk among producers, which depends more on the availability of wine and supply factors. I'm referring to the bulk that Spain or Italy uh, sell to Germany, or the bulk that we are selling to France or to Portugal, or that Spain is now selling again to Italy, right? So they are, we, both are bulk, both are uh, wines that we sell in big, large containers, but they are completely different markets that should be analyzed in a different way. way. Uh, have they been affected all in a similar way? Oh, it seems that not. Bulk, we start saying that bulk wine is an important part of total wine trade. It's more, it's around a third of total volume exported worldwide, but it's only around 8% of total value because of average prices at which bulk wine is, is exported. Uh, we could uh, mark a line if we look at uh, the different uh, importers and see what type of wines they, they buy. We can see that there are, as I was mentioning, two different markets. Actually, we could uh, mark this, this line around 70 cents uh, per liter of, of wine, right? Uh, just to, to, to take a reference. And if we see what type of markets we have below that line that is more or less around 70 cents, we see that there are normally producer countries like Germany, like France, like Portugal, like, like Italy. This is the type of market below the line where, for, for instance, Spain is, is, is the largest uh, by far. Uh, supplier, but then there is another type of, of, of market in bulk, actually above that line, which has nothing to do the, buy, the, the wine that is buying, that Australia is buying, that Sweden is buying, that um, Denmark and, and many other countries. Well, among top uh, exporters of wine in bulk, there are also big differences. And we can say again, uh, we can see uh, and take as a reference the average prices. Uh, we call it all uh, wine in bulk, but they are completely different things. Uh, for instance, there is very, has very little to do the wines that uh, Spain or Italy or Chile or South Africa are exporting around 40, 60, 70 cents per liter. And they have very little to do probably with the types of wine that countries like New Zealand, like France, or like the United States are exporting above one euro per liter. The type of wine and the type of clients and the type of business that New Zealand is doing in bulk has very little to do with the types of wine that Spain or Italy are selling to Germany, for instance, right? Grosso modo, a very simple segmentation, again, in the line of these 70 cents uh, per liter gives, will give this following size for each. Um, around uh, above 70 cents per liter, we'll have like around 47% of the market. But accounting with 
to for 69% uh, of total value, whereas below or equal to 70 cents per liter will have a market a subcategory that accounts for around 53% of total volume, around 30% of total value. So again, completely different markets. We can see some examples of how different countries, and particularly how different producers, have evolved during these, uh, these recent months. Well, if we see it in volume terms, we'll see that, of course, Spain is, is the largest exported by far. We are now very close to 13, billion, 13 million hectoliters exported in year-to-year -year figures up to September. We do have uh, numbers up to September this year uh, for most countries, except for Italy. I don't know if there is anyone, any Italian here, but it would be very good if we could have uh, good figures uh, more quickly from Italy. But again, we have uh, figures for most of our countries, of these countries, up to September. So we have a re relatively good uh, image of what is happening in recent months. As I was saying, uh, Spain is selling more than or close to 13 million hectoliters, which is a lot of wine. The recovery has been very, very rapid and, and very strong. Uh, we are exporting almost uh, more than ever. Uh, and it, uh, the change was particularly big after the harvest. As I was mentioning, more than COVID, more than the pandemic, more actually than the consumption and the effect on consumption, is important for the bulk market, the, and certain types of bulk market, uh, the availability of wine. What happens with the different uh, size of harvest in different countries, with the level of inventories in different countries, whether France needs or not uh, our wine, whether Italy, because of their size of their harvest or their needs or their sales or whatever, needs some more wine or does not need it, right? Uh, in this case, well, uh, apparently Spain is, is, is getting, is taking advantage of this, of this new necessity and, uh, and, and the lack of uh, wine, particularly in Italy and not that much in France. Well, uh, Spain is obviously growing at a level of uh, close to 25% per year, whereas Italy, Italy, Italian exports in bulk are decreasing, the same for Australia, the same for Chile, and South Africa is the other great actor that is increasing uh, bulk sales a lot up to September this year. Uh, we can see one of each of these uh, countries. I will, uh, we can go into a more detailed evolution of each of them. We see here, how, for instance, how Australia, which is exporting its own wine, but also in Australian statistics, I guess, probably someone could, uh, could uh, uh, check it, but uh, I think there is also a lot of uh, New Zealand wine that is being exported through Australia. It may happen, and these things may happen. But in any case, uh, official statistics of Australian exports in bulk are decreasing in terms of volume, 4.3, up to September this year. And if we take and give a look to the three main markets for Australian uh, bulk wines, we can see how they go, that they go particularly to the United Kingdom, to the United States, and to Belgium. Uh, they are increasing a bit to, to, to the United Kingdom and decreasing quite a lot to the U.S. and to uh, Belgium, right? Uh, we can see the same thing uh, with New Zealand. As, I, as we saw before, the uh, type of wine exported by New Zealand in bulk is something completely different. Uh, it is now decreasing you know, on a year-to-year Comparison, uh, 7.9 in September as compared to the same level in September last year, the year before. Uh, ex they export a lot to the United Kingdom, to Australia. Could be either for re-exporting in bulk or for bottling in Australia and then re-exported from Australia. So both things can happen. Uh, but they are de decreasing, 13.3 the exports to the United Kingdom, 3.2 export to the uh, Australia, and also slightly decreasing the exports of New Zealand wine in bulk to, um, to the United States. We can also see that, uh, as we were seeing before, exports coming from South Africa are recovering a lot, even in uh, relative terms larger and stronger than uh, exports coming from Spain. 
Up to September, they are growing at 41% in volume terms. Uh, they export particularly to the United Kingdom, to Germany, and to, and to the U.S., uh, and they are exporting a lot of wine, particularly to the U.S. and Canada. So it seems like they, they found that, that market, and they are really taking advantage of it. Exports from Chile are decreasing this year, 5.7 in volume up to September, particularly decreasing in, um, in the U.K., uh, but recovering the uh, Chinese market, which is very, very important for uh, Chile. Uh, exports coming from the United States, uh, we know that uh, they export particularly well to uh, the United Kingdom, uh, but they are decreasing now their exports. We know that, um, I don't know if you have following, but uh, following those, following those uh, statistics uh, from, the from the United States, we see that most or around 95% of the wine exported from the United States to the United Kingdom is now in bulk. It's not, it has nothing to do with the type of wine that it is, it has nothing to do with, it has to do with, with the facilities, the bottling facilities existing in the United Kingdom to bottle the wine there and distribute it uh, locally or re-export it from the United Kingdom. But in any case, uh, this year, export uh, from the United States in bulk is decreasing 17%. We can all see the same figures for France. France is, uh, has not much uh, wine. Uh, exports in bulk are also decreasing, uh, particularly to Germany. And we can see the same things for Italy, which has even less wine. Uh, actually, they are buying a lot of wine because of the low harvest. They export particularly to Germany. Germany, as you know, is, is the main market of uh, bulk wines for, for, for uh, Italy, although this is also changing now. Uh, well, from the Spanish perspective, uh, it seems to be good that the Spanish wine in the German market is increasing quite a lot and is probably in the way of substituting uh, Italian wine as a wine needed by both the uh, German consumer and the German wine industry. This is changing. Germany remains the major market for Italian bulk wine, but it's decreasing quite a lot this year. Uh, they have less wine, and the less wine they have, they prefer to put it either in Prosecco or in other bottled wines, right? And then we finally have uh, Spain, of course. Spain uh, plays in a different league. We are talking about around 13 billion uh, sorry, 13 million hectoliters, and increasing around 25% this year up to uh, September. Uh, we export mainly to France, to Germany, to Italy and Portugal, both, oh, sorry, all the four markets, which account for around 80% of our exports in bulk, 80% of our export in bulk in volume. All these four markets are producers of wine and exporters of wine. As I was mentioned, this is a completely different market of uh, the one we are talking when we talk about uh, New Zealand, Australia, or Chile, right? We are increasing a lot. We are increasing sales. Uh, generally, not that much to France, and this is a particular case. A particular case, we are increasing a lot to Germany. We are more than doubling our exports in bulk to Italy. Really, Italy needs Spanish wine this year. Uh, and we are growing quite a lot also to Portugal. Actually, the case for France is, is, is probably one of the biggest and, and uh, uh, most difficult questions that we are raising, uh, and we will probably talk about uh, today during, in, the, in the trade fair, why France is not buying that much of wine. France has had a, a, a historical low harvest. Uh, its sales are, are increasing a lot, of particularly bottled wines. So apparently the inventories of wine in, in France are not that big. Uh, so if they have a low harvest, demand is growing for French markets and the inventories are not big, everything seems to lead to the, to, to the point that France will need some more wine buying it abroad, and particularly in Spain that supplies most of the, of the wine in France. Why is France not buying that much of wine? It's something that uh, I hope uh, someone will, could explain to me. But uh, uh, probably that's the figure now. We are at uh, the end of November. 
And probably things will change in, in the coming weeks and in the coming months, uh, because France needs wine, right? If they want to uh, support the, 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 the rates of change of their exports and their sales, they def definitely need wine, and they do not have much wine. So uh, I hope, I think they, they will buy. Some examples, though, then among top actors uh, as exporters, uh, here we can see how things are changed up to September this year, except for the figures of Italy, as I mentioned, uh, only up to, to August. Uh, but most uh, countries are, are increasing. South Africa and Canada experience the largest growth, more in volume than in euros for the former, although at higher prices. Spain also sells much more liters at lower prices. Here we are also talking about prices, and there is a, an important effect. The opposite is true for France, where sales increase, particularly in value. Uh, well, this is what's happening. In our case, it's, it's not value where it's increasing, but it's, it's the volume. If we give a look also from the point of view of the importers, those that buy the wine, we see a great diver diversity of behaviors related to purchase of wine in bulk. We see Italy shows outstanding increase, as we mentioned. The problem with Italy as a, as a client, and this is something I say normally to, to the Spanish producers, is that some years they do need all the Spanish wine they can buy at whatever the price. So you can increase sales and you can increase prices. So you increase uh, uh, revenue also. But probably the year after, they will not need any wine. So you have clients that some year need more than a million hectoliters or two million hectoliters sometimes, and then the year after needs nothing. And that's a problem. That, that's a problem for any producer. That's a problem, a problem for, any, for any supplier, right? Um, so uh, Australia, as a buyer, benefits from larger sales, particularly coming from New Zealand. And uh, the US and the UK keep on buying in bulk at lower prices in euros. So different markets, actually, I must admit, uh, I was talking to Robert, and probably he would say the same thing, I'm pretty much confused about the, how the market is going this year. I, I, we, we, I, we are analyzing the market, uh, we have been analyzing the market, uh, the wine markets for the last uh, 15 years or so, and this year I, I must admit that I'm, I'm pretty confused about how, how things are going. But again, so what can we expect for the current campaign? And who knows, will be, will be the answer, right? Uh, and particularly, will post-COVID recovery be limited by scarcity? Uh, actually, OIV figures uh, given the other day and given by Regina today have shown that we are in, a, in one of those years, probably the second lowest harvest after 2017, I think it was. So we, we do not really have much wine. Uh, that, 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 that's our problem. Can this limit the amount of exports, the, the recovery of, uh, of demand that we are seeing in different markets. Well, numbers are therefore, uh, as well as the analysis and forecasts, more complex than ever. We can say that recovery of world consumption, sorry because it has moved, but recovery of world consumption and trade should foster uh, trade in bulk, which is true for Italy. Yes, Italy is buying a lot, uh, we are selling a lot, but not that much for Germany and less for France. What is happening there? What, what, what is really happening? It's, it's not clear. Low crops facing more consumption should increase prices. Yes, this is what should happen. If you have less wine and there is a large demand, prices it will normally increase, which seems to be happening already in a, an always volatile market. Yes, it seems it's happening, but it's not that clear how that will evolve in, in the coming weeks or months. Sustainability and economic efficiency push bulk exports from faraway origins. Faraway origins, I mean, it's particularly those that are coming from very, very faraway places into consuming and distributing countries. This will happen more and more in the future just because of economic efficiency and because of sustainability uh, conditions, right, and arguments. True, the UK and the US increased their imports of bulk, although exports from their traditional suppliers such as Australia, New Zealand, and Chile are not evolving particularly well this year, so things are not that clear. In all cases, different segments of the market for wine in bulk should be analyzed separately. This, we have it for clear. We are not talking about the same type of categories, and they should be analyzed completely in a completely different way, because they respond to different drivers. 
uh, also, because we didn't have much time to talk about it, but probably logistics is a problem today and will remain so for a large part of 2022. There are comments that logistics and the problems we have suffered for uh, regarding logistics are being solved during these months, but still, uh, for what I've heard from different companies, we may still have some problems in the, in the coming months, uh, but it will be solved. It's something conjunctural. Uh, but it's a temporary problem that needs readaptation of, of resources. Of course, uh, we also have problems with the uh, higher cost in different things, and, and this will affect also prices. Uh, uh, cost of energy will also affect our, our market. 2021 scarcity and more globally extreme volatility of the size of harvest due to climate conditions is a problem for the wine sector. Uh, if we look at uh, what has happened this year, the last uh, year and a half, if we look, give a look to what has been happening in the last uh, years, one of the problems, actually special, especially for Spain, but uh, in a worldwide context also, is that volatility is extremely high. It makes this market very difficult to deal with. And it's true that volatility is taking place, and it's true that it's probably higher than ever. If we give a look to the, to the size of, um, of production worldwide, these are the OIV figures, one of the things, and one of the things that we, we can see is that the average for different periods is more or less similar. We are talking about 270 million hectoliters of production worldwide. Uh, but the standard deviation, which is something that we can, we can calculate, has changed in different periods. The standard deviation, which is the uh, way of, um, of, of measuring the size, uh, the, the differences of uh, top and very low harvest to the, to the average, uh, is now 15.3 bigger uh, than, than, than ever, actually. Bigger than the period before and much bigger than the period at the beginning uh, at the end of the last century. So volatility is really, really taking place. So I'm a little bit confused about uh, what is happening with the markets. I don't know if you can give us, give us some, some, some more light about what is happening. Probably things will change after this fair. This is something that also happens. In recent years, we have seen that the fair itself and the way that people talk to each other, uh, close their deals or whatever, change things. Uh, but uh, what, is, uh, what we can forecast and we can, what we can expect is that it will be probably a good year. And since I'm quite optimistic, uh, no, I'm normally quite optimistic, I will say that there is demand. There, is, uh, signs, there are signs of recovery. And there is a large um, wish of recovering things as usual, and particularly recover wine consumption, which is something very good. So thank you very much. And if anyone wants any question, I will be ready. Thank you.